Well, from wherever you're joining us around the world, a very warm welcome to Core Sports Fight Night in association with MTK Global at the Conrad Hotel in Dubai, along with our presentation partner, Rain Body Fuel, The Beard Struggle, Buka and Bajil at the forefront of PCR testing, keeping us safe during these difficult times. Four fights on our undercard this afternoon before we switch over to CoreSports.well for the main event, the second boxing exhibition match for the 2018 World's Strongest Man, Hatthor Bjornsson, as he takes on the former Commonwealth Games heavyweight gold medalist, now 17-3 as a professional middle for Simon Valili, all building towards that huge grudge match between Thor and the Beast Eddie Hall, September 18th. And remember, that pay-per-view pre-sale starts on June the 3rd. Chris Lloyd with you for the afternoon or evening, wherever you are around the world, alongside my very good friend and the former IBF World Middleweight Champion, Dazzling Darren Barker. They have brought the big guns out for this one. Daz, how are you, mate? <laughs> I'm very, very well, thanks, mate. Look, I'm commentating on boxing with one of my pals. What could be better than this? What could be better than this? And speaking of big guns, Hatthor Bjornsson, a man who tonight is, of course, built around, will uh, compete in his second fight as a professional after going to points with Big Stevie Ward from Belfast earlier on this year. It was a very solid performance, Darren, from a man who had never stepped mm. into a professional boxing ring. And I think he surprised a few people. Do you know what, what surprised me, Chris, was how confident he was on the back foot. You look at Bjornsson and you think, look, how, how would I approach the fight? Well, a, a former world's strongest man, the size that he is, he is, you'd think he'd be on the front foot and try and out-muscle his opponent. But he was, he was competent on the back foot. You know, he tried to move as well as he could. Um, it, you know, it was impressive. But this is another tough test for, for Bjornsson. Ladies and gentlemen, invited guests here in the heart of Dubai. A warm welcome to our global audience tuning in from all corners of the world. Welcome to Dubai and welcome to live boxing courtesy of Core Sports live from the Conrad Dubai. This is the brunch with the punch. This is the brunchy punchy and we've got five fights scheduled for you throughout the course of the afternoon. Five fights, four pro one exhibition uh, featuring fighters from eight different countries. A truly international event for you with fighters from Egypt, Jordan, Azerbaijan, Cameroon, Ghana, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, and of course, the Man Mountain from Iceland to wrap things up at the end of proceedings. On behalf of Core Sports, we thank you for joining us. We'd also like to extend a couple of thanks, uh, courtesy of all the team at Core Sports. Huge thanks to our presenting partner, Rain, and long may they reign with us here in the UAE. Thanks also to The Beard Struggle, to Booker, uh, the glove sponsor, who are sponsoring all of our bouts, courtesy of the gloves this evening. To Bajil as well. This is a COVID protocol event. Uh, being fought within a COVID bubble. All of our attendees this evening have uh, been vaccinated fully here in the UAE, which tops the list of vaccinations per 100 people worldwide at the moment. Leading from the front, courtesy of the Dubai Health Authority, the Dubai Municipality, and of course our thanks to Dubai Sports Council for sanctioning this event here this evening. Our thanks to Bergil for all of the testing that has gone on for all of our competitors, to all of those involved in the event, and all of our guests here tonight who have kindly uh, been vaccinated to be with us here today tested on the door and therefore we are COVID safe here in the UAE COVID safe in Dubai thanks also to Karasti to Soapy Joe's Laundry to Coles Health and Wellness and of course our friends at Canon Middle East I must say a big thank you to our host venue here the Conrad Dubai in the heart of Dubai Lots then to look forward to. As I said, we have got four title fights for you, and then we'll wrap up with that uh, uh, extraordinary bout, the titan weight bout between two great fighters, Simon from the UK and, of course, Thor from Iceland. Uh, that will be ahead of what promises to be a real rumble a little later on, la later on this year as uh, Eddie Hall goes up against Hathor Bjornsson, September the 18th is the date for your diary. It is going to be the heaviest boxing match in history. There is beef between these two men. There is a lot of beef between them. And it's going to get sorted out in the ring on September the 18th. To stay up to date with where you can find that one, you can 
get involved with the pay-per-view, which will be live on June the 3rd. $9.99. That's all it costs for the entire fight car, where we will have some amazing fights featuring some of the biggest names in boxing and some uh, real bouts uh, with a huge amount of contention. Fight card, full fight card, $9.99, courtesy of CoreSports.World. To find out more, at CoreSportsWorld. Right, enough of the big sell. Let's get on with the big fight. It's time for fight number four on our card, fight number one for our international audience tuning in from across the globe. This is the first pro fight of the night. This is a super lightweight division fight. Both fighters weighing in at 63.5 kgs. And this one will be contested over four three-minute rounds. So, without further ado, please welcome into the ring. Please welcome to Dubai. From the beautiful country that is Egypt, the land of the pharaohs, the land of the pyramids, please welcome out of the corner, Moaz Alam. So RMC uh, Tom Urquhart getting us underway for the afternoon in Dubai, as is this young man, Mouiz Alam from Cairo. He's got a pretty flamboyant style, almost accidentally a little bit drunken master for those of you that remember Emmanuel Augustus back in the day. Puts a lot into his shots, potentially looks quite heavy handed, but he's up against a very well schooled amateur in Bada Samreen in our first contest. We've won four rounds over super lightweight. Division that, of course, had the He's fighting out on the blue corner, his Josh Taylor. This afternoon into the evening here from Dubai, the UAE. And the red corner from Jordan. And flying the flag for Jordan here in Dubai tonight. Please welcome to the red corner, Bada Samreen. Yeah, as I was saying there, uh, division, of course, that just crowned uh, an undisputed champion in Josh Taylor at the weekend. And Darren, what a performance that was to crown him the king of the 140-pound division. What a fighter, Chris. Unbelievable fighter. We commentated on Ramirez against uh, Hooker once, once upon a time. And honestly, uh, he was a great fighter. But Josh Taylor, done everything needed and, yeah, the, the main man in the division. Absolutely. Well, Bada Samarin, uh, a very, very good amateur himself. He got to the semi-finals of uh, the World Youth Championships in Budapest 2018. He lost to a very good young Cuban called Amara Iribar. You could see in that fight early, he's got good distance control, nice balance. He's a very sharp counter-puncher. A lot to his game as well. He stopped uh, Joshua Barna from the Ghanaian capital of Accra on his debut. He's genuinely got some talent, Bada Samarin. Both fighters then in the ring, and just to reintroduce them to you, we have got uh, a pro fight with an Arab influence here this evening. It's Egypt against Jordan, the man fighting out the blue corner. Two professional tights, uh, did three professional fights to date, two wins, uh, uh, no losses, and one draw to his name. Fighting out the blue in the black shorts with the white shoes with the blue gloves from Egypt, Moaz Alam. His opponent with one professional fight to his uh, name so far. One fight, one win, unbeaten so far. The man at the red corner in the white shorts with the red gloves, with the black boots. He's the man from Jordan. He's the man he can. He is Bada Samreen. Four three-minute rounds in this professional fight for you. Fighters in the ring. Ringside, same judges. Waleed, Gary, and Michael. Shaz in the ring for us. He calls him in. This is when he gets serious. Your boys touch him up. Okay, make sure your boy obey my commands at all time. I like to see a good, clean fight. Watch the rabbit punches. And anywhere from the waist navel up is good for me. Touch him up. Good luck. 
Touch them up, he says. We're ready to go. Let's get this atmosphere electric. It's fight night in Dubai. It's Core Sports live from the Conrad. Okay, well, we are underway here in Dubai at the Conrad Hotel. Four three minute rounds between Badr Samreen in the white trunks trimmed with green and uh, Egypt's Moise Alam in the black trunks with a gold trim. Four threes, in the 140 pound limit. As Alam just leads off with a, a left hook. Pretty aggressive style, Alam. Let's already jump in with his work. Does sit down on his shots, no messing around. But Sam Reen is a sharp counter puncher, as you can just see already, picking his shots well. May take him a round or so to settle down, Darren. But just wonder in this contest whether that amateur pedigree and the difference between the two of them will start to show as this one goes on. Absolutely. I think Alam here trying to be busy from the first bell, moving his head, trying to get into the action and. I noticed that uh, on the record of Alam, he's not fought for five years, so this is going to be tough for him against someone with a good amateur pedigree like Sam Reem to find your time and a distance. It takes a little bit of time, but with four rounds, they really do fly by. But Sam Reem got a beautiful jab, good boxing ability, and like you say, that, that pedigree should si uh, shine through as this fight goes on. And now Alam just letting his hands go with Sam Reem back onto the ropes. But... Uh, the Jordanian just slipping a roll in most of those shots, catching a few on the gloves. And you can see what I mean about that sort of drunken master style. It's a really unusual <laughs> gait that Alam has got. He sort of bounces in. I mean, it's not as exaggerated as Augustus, and I think that's probably where the comparisons end. That was a nice combination there from Sam Reed. Yeah, Alam good positive start from Alam, but now... Through. Yeah, we see Sam Reed now. The class starting to come through, picking the shots. Ones and twos, not wasting anything. Nice and shabby. That was a lovely right hand from Sam Marine. Straight over the lazy jab of Alam. Yeah, nice work. And already just starting to pick the, the hurtful shots, regardless of uh, Alam's busyness and bustling. Come forward, Ooh. Starley, starting to ro walk into that right hand. And as we thought, just the, the quality, the pedigree, and as you say, the activity of Sam Reed in the last couple of years. He's uh, looking already the difference. Can be difficult though, Darren, against uh, opponents like Alam, and they're so unorthodox. Oh, well, left, left hook. hook lands, and that's buzzed the Egyptian. He's on the ropes, oh. he's hurt here, and Sam Reed sitting down on the shots. The referee steps in, the ropes kept him up, and so he will get a standing eight count. He is hurt here. 20 seconds on the clock. Can he see out the end of the first round? His eyes don't look too clever the referee's going to let him continue can Sam Reed put something together to bring oh a quick end to this first contest combination lands Alam is down and the referee has waved him off at the end of this first round what a performance from Bada Sam Reed. that was ruthless Darren it was punch perfect there against an opponent that really fancied it Alam come out meaningful, wanted a win, but he was just too open, and that was a beautiful right hand to set things up. Oh, that was the, the finish, sorry. But it was a right hand that started the trouble for Alan. Beautiful pick, punch picking, nice and sharp, very powerful and aggressive with the work, and that was a good win for Sam Reem. Yeah, and of course the problem with that Philly shell defence is that if you don't get the timing on the the shoulder slip and the roll, those right hands will just come straight over that shoulder and they hit him on the temple. I think it was a right hand, left hook, right hand. We'll have to look again at that replay. But uh, the first meaningful left hook that he landed about a minute or so before that in the corner buzzed Moise mm. Alam and then the ropes kept him up. The referee rightly gave him the opportunity of that standing eight count, assessed him. So he had plenty of time to try and recover, but I think from the outset, he was uh, a little bit out of his depth, wasn't he? He was. He was Alam, but credit to him, he came, he, he tried to upset the, the talented Sam Reem. Chaz brings him in just uh, wasn't his after. Day. We have a result. Winner by KO, winner by knockout. After two minutes and 52 seconds, the winner by KO. Fighting out of the red corner from Jordan. Butter, Sam Reem.
Congratulations to Bada. Commiserations to Moaz Alam, the man from Egypt, who was a valiant fighter all the way through to the end. Well done to Moaz, who was convinced that he could go on, but the, the corner, calling the shots down there. So congratulations to Bada. Commiserations to Moaz. Put your hands together for both of these fighters as they leave the arena. Well done to Moaz and Bada. Okay, to all of our viewers, but also to all of our guests down here at the Conrad Dubai who are enjoying their uh, punchy brunchy this afternoon here in Dubai. Brunch is a tradition in Dubai. This is a brunch with a difference. This is a brunch that pulls no punches. Uh, this is the punch brunch, uh, and we will have more for you in just a few moments' time. Well, these are the uh, final moments for Muiz Alam at the hands of Bada Samarin. He started pretty well, Darren, to be fair. He actually let his hands go, but I think it was just the, the difference in quality was, was pretty obvious. And as I say, that Philly Shell defence just didn't really do him any favours because he just didn't have his timing with it. And so all of the left hooks and right hands that, you know, really that, that defence is designed to catch just were, were getting through every time that Samarin let his hands go. Absolutely, and that, that's not the kind of defence you want to be using when you've been outside the ring for, for five years. That's something that you pr perfect through activity. And look at that right hand there, so aggressive, Samarine. When he got going, when he let his hands go, he, he's very exciting to watch. And uh, there's that patience as well that he's shown for the pedigree. But that was a good finish, spiteful finish, and he's one to watch in the future. Yeah, it certainly is, as I say, a very good Amateur indeed, that uh, win takes him to 2-0 and oh as a professional. The first of uh, four fights on our undercard this evening. And uh, then we'll be heading over to coresports.world for Hafthor Bjornsson against Simon Valili. Now Simon Valili, Darren, for the cohort that have tuned in maybe uh, as part of the Strongman fan base, won't necessarily know too much about him. He was... Uh, Commonwealth Games gold medalist at heavyweight in 2010. Bit of a wayward character, I think, is is the kindest way to put it. And that, unfortunately, just put paid to his progress as a, as a professional. But he's definitely going to offer a very, very tough test to Hathor Bjornsson tonight. We know this is supposed to be an exhibition bout, but I think we both felt the same way. that he, He's a guy that doesn't really play by the rules. And he, he said as much in an interview earlier this week. He said, look... If I get a chance, I'm going to take this guy's head clean off. Chris, we spent some time with Simon Villili in the match and fight camp uh, bubble, didn't we, in Brentwood, London. And uh, I don't think I see him smile once. You know, he's a very aggressive, <laughs> spiteful man. And I don't think exhibition is in his vocabulary. You know, I feel he thinks he feels that a big statement here, a big win, will, uh, will potentially open doors for him. Who knows? And... That coupled with, like I say, his personality, I just feel from the first bell, he's just going to let his hands go, Chris. Yeah, we saw him uh, taken out in three rounds by the very, very good Fabio Wardley um, at fight camp. Mm. Uh, and Wardley is, is fast become one of the kind of rising prospects of heavyweight boxing, certainly in the UK. Um, but but again, he was game in that fight. He took it to, to Wardley. He had, a, he had a moment in there, but his moment was cut pretty short. He had Wardley backed up. Uh, against the ropes when he was taken out himself. Uh, but that's how he likes to fight. I spoke to Stephen Ward uh, yesterday, who, of course, was uh, Hathor's very first uh, opponent in the ring, moved from light heavy to cruiserweight, but a big light heavyweight was Stephen Ward. Um, and he said he was very surprised at the agility of the big man, how hard he was to catch clean. And actually, um, given that he was 206 kilos this time last year, he's trimmed all the way down to... <laughs> I say trimmed down. I mean, he's come down to 152 <laughs> kilos for this weekend. <laughs> Just to put that in perspective for some of the the audience listening, he, he was, when he broke that deadlift world record of 501, he was almost twice the weight of Anthony Joshua, the current unified world heavyweight champion. I mean, just a monster of a man, hence his nickname, The Mountain. Um, but uh, yeah, he's shown a hell of an aptitude for 
you know, 12 months of, of having never done a sport to getting in a professional mm. ring. Were you sort of impressed with what you've seen given the context of, of everything he's done in his career? I was. Uh, and like you say, his, uh, the way he approached the, the camp, the fight itself, you know, we're big fans of this sport. And when these guys are coming in from different worlds, uh, come to boxing we just want him to show a bit of of respect and, and appreciate the art form and that's exactly what he's done you know he's he's dedicated his life to it and yeah that, i think that showed in the fight with ward you know he, he was comfortable on the back foot so he'd obviously done plenty of sparring there's a lot to work with chris don't get me wrong uh, i think hand speed being one of the one of the issues obviously uh, when, when you're lifting heavy weights etc it does uh slow you down slightly and i think being the size that uh Beyonce is that's always going to be an issue so it's about nullifying that and finding a way of landing the shots and one thing I will say he is nimble on his feet surprisingly so I think it's about trying to close the gap and and force his size into the contest and if he can do that he's a nightmare for anyone thanks Dan we're next up uh, six rounds of super middleweight action Tom Akuha our MC for the afternoon is stepping back into the ring so we'll take a, a brief pause and we'll hand you back over to Tom momentarily. Welcome back to Dubai, to all of our global audience uh, tuning in from all corners of the globe. Welcome uh, to Dubai, welcome to the Conrad Dubai, and welcome to live boxing, courtesy of Core Sports. So thanks to our title sponsor, Rain, for making this one happen. Uh, it is raining down here uh, at the moment, raining with all sorts uh, of extraordinary fights. Uh, first one came to a quick conclusion, knockout in the first round, uh, but what is going to happen in the second round, second fight? Well, let's find out, uh, because fight number two coming your way, and the big one, the Titan weight fight later on in proceedings, when Hathor Bjornsson uh, takes on Simon Valili in what will be an extraordinary encounter of man mountains going against each other. That's still to come. Next up, though, we've got a real treat for you. This is a super middleweight division fight. Both fighters weighing in at 76 kg. The official weigh-in right here at the corner in Dubai yesterday. This will be competed over six three-minute rounds here in Dubai. And the two men that will be battling it out, slugging it out here in Dubai. From Azerbaijan, fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome to Dubai, Jayhoon. Bashirzade! Well, a very quick start to uh, proceedings as Bada Samarin got rid of Moise Alam in our first contest at Super Lightweight in under a round. Can Jason Bashazade from Baku and Azerbaijan have more luck? Moscow on his debut to Dubai for the second fight of his career, boxing at a more natural super middleweight limit, having been stopped by a cruiserweight on his debut, giving away nearly 20 he pounds. Out of blue, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. It's the man from the Cameroon. He carries the hopes of Africa on his shoulders here this afternoon. Please welcome to Dubai, fighting out of the red corner, Stefan Fonjo Lequizos. You'll recognise this music from the uh, the Ali film starring Will Smith. One of his most famous nights in Kinshasa, Zaire in 1974 against George Foreman. A young man from Cameroon, Stefan Bonjo, who's 3-0, making his way to the ring. Very solidly put together super middleweight. 
from the Cameroonian capital of Yaoundé. 23 years of age, two knockouts from his first three wins. He's got a nice style, compact fundamentals, a stiff, solid jab. He does like getting drawn into a bit of a bar brawl and an entertaining two-minute scrap with a young kid called Prince Tete at the beginning of last month. That was in Usher Town in Accra, so Tete had home advantage, but he was overmatched for a pea shooter to a gunfight, as they say. And for his pretty hefty early efforts, he was caught and taken out by Fonjo so inside the first round. Four weeks later, ring. he is back let's in give action. You a, bit, a few more details about now the blue corner behind me there, fighting in the white shorts with the green trim in the blue gloves for you this afternoon from Azerbaijan with one fight to his name and one loss to his name. is looking for his first victory uh, on the pro circuit. Please welcome to Dubai, Jehun Bachizadi. His opponent fighting out of the red corner. The man that can with the white shorts and the gold trim wearing the red gloves out of red. He's the pride of Cameroon. Faces himself here in the UAE fighting uh, and making a name for himself. He is unbeaten to date. Three and unbeaten. Three fights to date. Three wins to date. And please welcome to the ring one more time, Stefan Lequizons Funjo. Six three-minute rounds for this super middleweight fight. Chaz calls him in. Okay, make sure you give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all time. Watch the rabbit punches. I will be pulling you up on that. Anywhere from the navel up is good. Touch him up. Good luck to the both of you. Touch him up and good luck to the both of you. Those are the thoughts uh, of your ring referee. Chaz has got this one. Six three-minute rounds coming your way. So, second contest of the night underway between Stefan Fonjo from the Cameroon in the white shorts with the red waistband just poking out the top. And his opponent, Jehun Bashizade, in the white trunks trimmed with green from Azerbaijan. Some decent amateurs, Azerbaijan, particularly from Baku in the last few years. Parvis Bagarov, welterweight in medal at the Worlds in 2015, beat Josh Kelly. Around the same time, he also beat Ronio Iglesias, an excellent Cuban. He had a good uh, World Series boxing team in the competition's formative years too. Finalist, the Baku Fires in 2013, losing out to the Cuba Domadores, who were the dominant team in the tournament's history. And he's up against it here, against Stefan Fonjo. Already lands a Ooh. right hand left hook and that stunned Bashazade with only a minute gone in this first round. Yeah, he jumped on in Fonjo. I've been, done a little bit of research on Fonjo and, uh, and the fights I have seen, I've been impressed. You know, he, he's a nice, tidy boxer. Fights at a, a, a slowish sort of tempo, but he's got good variation, head and body. Works the jab well. At times does poor with it, but... Yeah, he's a decent, well-rounded fighter. Yeah, stiff jab as well. Likes to get behind that early, and he has done so. And you could just see that Bashazade oh. felt the force of the left hook right hand, and he felt that one too. It's just got the signs that if Fonjo can put them together here, Darren, that he might make yep. short work of Bashazade. Oh, he's looking for that right, right hand. hand. Yeah, Bashard, has to watch out for that right hand. He's got to keep his left hand high, a lot higher. Can't be pouring with the jab because Fonjo, we can see already, he's looking to tee up that right hand. And he's had success already, Chris. Oh. Yeah, and he lands it again there and then throws him to the floor. That will count as a, as a slip. But obviously you can see already who's the dominant party holding centre mm. ring. It is Steph and Fonjo. Bashard has got to try and get hold. He's got, to, uh, he's got to try and grab hold, move his feet, because he's just, I hate to say it, an accident waiting to happen here. Fonjo cannot miss with that right hand. Yeah, he's just patiently stalking. He knows he's got six rounds to get the job done. Just like to see him maybe change up the levels, go low, and then come over the top yep. of that right hand. Next time, up, a cut through the middle off the back of that combination, but just 
one second to go in the round and Bashazali sees it out, but no doubt he was buzzed on a couple of occasions there. And a solid opening round for, for Stefan Fonjo. That man's going to have to really, really dig in, Darren, already, I think, in a, a little bit deeper waters than he would have liked. Yeah, I, I can't see this going much further, Chris. And uh, if I'm in the corner of Fonjo, I'll be saying, look, let's close the show. Let's, let's get the job done in style. And, and, and you can do that. But like you said in the opening round there, changing your levels, variation with the jab, plant that jab to the body, bring the hands down and then follow up with the right hand because he can't miss with that right hand over the top. So that's definitely the shot he'll be looking for. Can't get carried away with it, but that is the shot that will close this fight, Chris. Yeah, the problem he's going to have is that I think the first meaningful shot that landed on Bashazari's chin just has now caused some real hesitation in the mm. Azerbaijani and he's now on the back foot and he doesn't really want to commit and, and that, of course, can make it difficult to land those shots. You almost want to draw your opponent onto something. It's just whether he can be patient enough to do that. Maybe he won't need to, but certainly there looks to be a level between these two. But he's come out aggressively. Bashazadi just trying to hold centre ring. How long that will last is yet to be seen. Not long. So it turns out. And now Fonjo starting already to re-establish himself, pushing Bashazade back to the ropes. Now looking again to set that right hand up. Counters with it. Oh. I mean, the referee's got to start having a look. All, he? he's, just, he's well under the cost, Chris. He really is. Landing at will here, head, body, good variation, almost turning his back down. That's right, and I think the referee's jumped in. Yeah, he stopped it, Chris. Yeah, I think the right decision there from the referee. You could just see in that early portion of the first round, the very first shots that started to land just caused hesitation. Our two wins in the space of less than five weeks for Big Steph and Fonjo who looks uh, a pretty well-rounded super middleweight. Very well-conditioned, good shot selection, can clearly punch. Just wonder as we see him go up the ranks how far he can go. But for young Bashazadi, he was just uh, a little overmatched there, wasn't he? And uh, I think lucky to really see out the end of the first round. And the writing was uh, on the wall for him. But a good round and a good win for Stefan Fonjo there and that will move him to 4-0 and o as a professional super middleweight with three knockouts. Tom Urquhart just uh, taking centre stage there ready to read out the official particulars. Two more fights then to go before we switch over to coresports.world for our main event Hatfield Bjornsson versus Simon Valili. We've got a result after 31 seconds of the second round. The ref has called this one, ref has stepped in the bout and therefore we have a winner and the winner after referee stoppage in round number two fighting out of the red corner Stefan Fonjo Congratulations to our victor, Stefan Fonjo. Stefan's going to have a few words with us as well in the ring here. Uh, Stefan, uh, you can continue the extraordinary journey that you're on. Uh, four fights now, unbeaten. Your thoughts on the fight? Again? Your thoughts on the fight? My th ah, I'm happy. Uh, like always, easy work, easy fight. Uh, hard work, easy fight, easy work. Every time the fight was good and easy for me so i'm happy and uh, baby step and we're gonna arrive our destination so i'm happy and i want to say a big thanks to everyone who came to support me the boss of bns group who is here with all the family thanks bro my coaches everyone thank you very much and uh, See you soon in the high level. Yeah, world champion, inshallah, only the walk. Yeah. Thank you. you are the man, Stefan. He is La Cuisance. He cooks it up every single time. Put your hands together for your victor. Fighting at the red corner, Stefan La Cuisance. Fonjo.
Now that live fight coming away in just a few minutes' time, we're going to take a five-minute break. Back with more straight after that. Okay, well, as you heard from Tonga Okart there, we're heading for a commercial break shortly. Another win for Stefan Fonjo. Um, after the commercial break, we will be back for the vacant UBO Intercontinental Lightweight title. Eight rounds between undefeated Anthony De Bruyne from the Netherlands and Emmanuel Neumenser from Ghana. That's when we come back here in Dubai. Escape to the most tropical island with the most tropical flavor. Not that kind of flavor. That kind. Then add a floral punch of lychee slammed into a tangy burst of little corn. Give it zero sugar, but still make it taste good. Paradise good. Then pack it with powder so you can outdo you. That's what goes into New Rain Lilacoid Lychee. A total body fuel. Here is the stronghold. It will be heavily guarded. Of course it is. It's the most valuable thing in the world. We will send a dozen Viking ships through the landing. And raid, pillage, until we make it there. No survivors! Yeah! Yeah! We are in the hands of all the... Yeah! So are you guys doing all of this just for some beard oil? Yeah. 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 Are you looking to let your hair down and have a good time? Well, look no further. Check. Skinny Isaacs Belfast, Northern Ireland's premier hair house, has all the tools to satisfy your needs. Choose from our lineup of high quality barbers. Maybe it's time you paid a visit to the hair house. Welcome back everybody to the Conrad Hotel here in Dubai. The big fight between Hathor, Julius Bjornsson and Simon Verlilli is uh, our main event this evening. Just looking at uh, highlights from the last win for Stefan Fonjo, Cameroonian fighter who's moved to 4-0 and with three knockouts. The latest of that man in the corner, Jehan Bashazade from Azerbaijan, who was just overmatched in the second round and the referee doing the right thing and putting a stop to uh, the contest. Next up for the vacant UBO Intercontinental Lightweight title. Eight rounds between undefeated Anthony De Bruyne from the Netherlands and Emmanuel Noy Mensa from Ghana. You're listening to Chris Lloyd alongside my very good friend, former IBF world middleweight champion, Darren Barker. And Darren, all eyes, of course, uh, here for the main event between Hathor Bjornsson uh, and Simon Valili. Eddie Hall, the opponent, of course, in September, September the 18th, uh, for that big class. These two don't really like each other and have both been preparing hard for this. Hall has made the choice not to have any exhibition matches in, in preparation and, as far as I'm aware, hasn't done a, a great deal of, of sparring. Could that really play into Bjornsson's hands that he's been willing to, to take the risk of getting in the ring with professional fighters? Because you know better than, than I do that you cannot buy that professional experience. Absolutely, Chris. You know, it, ring time is so valuable when you when you're a novice. You know, to try find your timing and distance. But not only the boxing side of things. About experience, experiencing the the bright lights on fight night, the nerves that you're going to feel. And you know, he'll go into that Eddie Hall fight with those experiences in the bank. You know, it won't be alien to him. Whereas Eddie Hall. Like you said, there's a bit of bad blood and nerves and nervous energy is going to be flowing like you can't imagine. And yeah, I mean, 
Bjornsson has done exactly the right thing, getting in the ring under the lights uh, and, to be fair, competing with very good fighters as well. So, yeah, I think uh, it is in the hands of Bjornsson here, in my opinion. And, of course, uh, a big thanks, I'm sure, go to MTK Global for helping uh, the, the team here source those fighters. Stephen Ward, uh, former European champion, was uh, the first of those. Big, big light heavyweight that had moved up to, to cruiser in uh, in recent months. A stable mate of uh, Carl Frampton's, trained by Jamie Moore and Nigel Travis up in Manchester. Very, very good technical boxer. and He understood the role that he was playing in that contest, getting in and having a move around with Thor, making things competitive and giving him a real sense of what it's like to take shots. And Thor... Uh, struck up a bit of a friendship with with Stephen Ward that's continued after the fight. And he said to him, look, please don't go easy on me. I really want to feel what it's like to be hit by a professional fighter. I need this to be a, a realistic representation of what I'm going to experience in September on, on every level. I need the nerves of knowing that I'm going to be getting in with a proper fighter that's coming in to, to try and beat me. Um, to, tonight, of course, is, is a different step up for those of you that are just joining us because, you know, as we know, Darren, Simon Valili is a, a bit of a wayward character. He, he's not a guy that really adheres to the, the rules as a given and he likes to cause a little bit of trouble. He said to the press early this week, he said, Look, if I get an opportunity, I'm going to be trying to take Thor Bjornsson's head off. And, I mean, if he does, I, I wonder where that leaves the, the fight in September because... It's not going to be an easy experience if Thor is is stopped in this fight, or even if he's he's knocked down, and that's what makes this so intriguing, isn't it? Absolutely. Look, it doesn't matter who talks to Simon Villili, whether it be his coaches, management team. They may say to him, "Look, it's an exhibition. You know, move around, take your time, uh, play your role in this contest." He will let his hands go as if it was a a, a world title fight. I have no doubt this evening. Um, He's he just loves to fight, you know. He really does. He he's he certainly is a wayward character. But uh, going on to Bjornsson, if he was to lose and suffer uh, a bad defeat here uh, to the hands of Villili, I think it, it all depends on his mental strength. Really, will he sort of understand that his sport is boxing? It's the nature of the the sport. This can happen, or or will it just completely put him off the sport of boxing? I don't know. But one thing for sure, when that first bell goes this evening. They're going to let their hands go, and it's going to be exciting. Yeah, he's actually been sparring with uh, a heavyweight called Senad Gashi, who a lot of you in the UK certainly will remember because he came in, I think, as the latest replacement of Carlos Taka about 18 months, maybe two years ago now. I've had a really, really good scrap, good scrap with him. I've had a battle for the back of the fight with Derek Chisora, which, 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 which I think, think he promised, promised a lot, delivered, delivered very much, and just kind of ran around for the duration of the fight and fight straight to Chisora. So he was on the end of a very one sided fight. Decisions, but he was uh, again another professional fighter that he's been with, making um, those kind of adjustments and, and trying to give himself the very best possible preparation for uh, this fight tonight and, of course, for the 18th of September against Eddie Hall. Yep, he's doing exactly the right thing. Um, you can't play boxing; it has to be done in the correct manner. And um, yeah, hats off, hats off to him for for, for taking this fight seriously. And here we go with the next contest. Yeah, this is Tom uh, Kahar, our MC for the afternoon. Just going through his final preparations. As I mentioned, the UBO Intercontinental title, which is what you can see there in the ring. Eight rounds of action at lightweight. Let's hear from Tom now. Welcome back to Dubai. Welcome back on behalf of all the team at Core Sports to this brunch with a punch live from Dubai. We do brunch better than anywhere else in the world and we're doing it with style here today courtesy of Core Sports. Wouldn't be possible without the support of all the team at Rain. We've got one of their co-founders ringside, uh, Carl Keller, the pride of Central Michigan University over there sitting ringside at the moment uh, with us here today. Big thanks to Rain and all the team uh, all the sponsors and partners that have come on board to make this one possible. We're into fight number six for you here this evening. Uh, we have a course and we are building up to our, well, main event of the evening. The Man Mountain that is Hathor Bjornsson. 
uh, taking on another man mountain from Middlesbrough in the UK, Simon Villilli. That one's coming your way a little later in proceedings. But before that, our first title fight of the night. There's a belt on this one. As you can see, it's being paraded around the ring at the moment. This is for the vacant UBO intercontinental lightweight title of the world. It will be competed over eight rounds, eight three-minute rounds, which will be officiated by Shaz in the ring right here uh, in Dubai. This is Brunch with a Punch, and it's time now to welcome your two title fight fighters into the ring. And the man fighting out of the blue corner, flying the flag for Ghana with five wins. Five losses and a draw to his name so far. The man, the can from Ghana is Emmanuel Noy Mensa. Come take a seat. Well, he was in deep against Otto Joseph in his last fight in Lagos. Emmanuel Neuermenser. He dislocated his right arm with a long, awkward right hand in the early stages of uh, the contest. And Sorry for the screen, Mr. Munchie, but it looks like it went out and came back in again. But he carried on valiantly for a good three or four rounds, just using the left hook and occasionally trying to let the right hand go. But I think it must have been a fairly serious injury because he's been out of the ring for a couple of years now. He's got a good style, decent balance, and he can box a bit too. We know he's got heart, but will that inactivity cost him tonight? It has been a difficult time for fighters all around the world. Many have been out for 18 months or, or more. Those who didn't fight until the back end of 2019, only just getting out again in the professional ring. He is unfortunately one of them. Emmanuel Menso then from Ghana. The Ghana in the ring. His opponent fighting out of the red corner. Our second fighter from the Netherlands. All the way from Holland. Welcome to Dubai. Eight wins, no losses. One draw in his professional career to date. Please welcome from the Netherlands, Anthony. To Bruin. Well, these two, arguably in the best division currently in world boxing, it's about as deep talent-wise as you could possibly ask for at present. Tifimo Lopez and Vasyl Lomachenko, Ryan Garcia, who was so brilliant against Luke Campbell. And, of course, Devin Haney, who does battle against Jorge Linares this weekend. All of the young guns taking those steps up. Really good fight, that. De Bruyne has got ambitions of his own, and he's a decent fighter. Solid, compact, aggressive. He's a thudding puncher. Likes to come forward and boss the action. 8-0. Just a solitary draw on his record. He knows he'll have a decent audience worldwide watching this because we are creeping towards that main event of Hathor Bjornsson and Simon Valili. Of course, a big thanks to uh, our subsidiary sponsors, Karasti, Soapy Joe's Laundry, Coles Health and Wellness, and Canon too. This core sports fight night here at the Conrad Hotel in Dubai. And Anthony De Bruyne is soaking up uh, this ring walk. I think this one must be his favourite song, Chris. <laughs> He's enjoying it. We could have uh, had the kettle on. 
for the last couple of minutes, Darren. <laughs> Two humble men in the ring getting ready to contend for this vacant UBO Intercontinental Lightweight title. Both men weighing in at the official weight of 61.3 kg. The man fighting out of the blue corner in the white shorts with the white gloves. He's the pride of Ghana. He's with us here in Dubai. He's fighting for the title. He is Emmanuel Noy Mensa. His opponent fighting out all the red corner. Big support in from the Holland, from the Netherlands with us here today. He fights out of the blue shorts, of the, of the black shorts with the black belt, with the black gloves. Uh, he is the man contending for the title. He's all the way from the Netherlands. He is Tony De Bruyne. These two contesting for the vacant UBO Intercontinental Lightweight title. Eight three-minute rounds. All smiles in the ring. Shaz will call him in. Let's listen in. The belt's with us. The belt's going to one of these two momentarily. Guys, this is a title fight, okay? So I expect you to conduct yourself in a sporting manner. Make sure you obey my commands at all times. Anywhere from the navel up is good. I will pull you up, no rabbit punches, okay? Touch them up, good luck to the both of you. It's a title fight, live from Dubai. The belt's with us, you're with us. Our international audience are with us as well. It's seconds out, fight time. So the belt you saw there, the vacant UBO intercontinental lightweight title. Eight rounds between the undefeated Anthony De Bruyne from the Netherlands in the black shorts with a gold trim. Already just stabbing away at the body with the left hand of Emmanuel Neumensa from the Ghanaian capital of Accra. Lovely changing of the levels there with the jab, body, then heads, and then just comes back with a three punch combination. Yeah, one thing I noticed with De Bruyne, I haven't watched him, is he boxes at a good tempo, doesn't let his hands go in threes, fours, fives, but what he does throw, he throws plenty of twos and threes, and he's busy, he throws a nice jab, good variation with it, he works well to the body, good compact fighter, and uh, very entertaining to watch at times. Yeah, one thing he was a little bit guilty of, and he has done it again here against Ishmael Ariti. wasn't cutting off the ring and just letting fighters mm. out the side door when he's got them backed onto the ropes. It's a nice shot to the body from Mensah, and he's just got to take that step across his opponent when he pushes him back. Well, he's just kind of circling around him, not really shutting that space down. That was better, though. Triples the jab up. Yeah, he doesn't waste much, De Bruyne. Very accurate can at times be guilty of pouring his shots out instead of really letting his shots go but boxes like I say at a good tempo so usually in, in entertaining fights yeah it'd be interesting to see whether he's kind of leveled up his uh, his toolkit since last time tends to kind of either be attacking or defending it's often really looked to slip and counter or or catch and counter. He's either doing that or he tucks up into his shell. Mm. Tell you what though, Noy Mensa, he fancies this. He looks confident, coming forward, letting his hands go. Not overawed by the hype of De Bruyne. He really fancies he can upset the cart and, and make a real statement in his career. Yeah, and when he has landed, he's pushed De Bruyne back with, with relative ease. Doesn't seem too fussed by... Mm. The, the power, De Bruyne can punch a little bit, but Mensa so far has so had a good start, hasn't he? He has. Positive start, and that's what you need against the, the favourite. Kind of uh, upset them slightly, get them thinking, hold on a minute, you know, this is not going to go all my way. And uh, get them to try and do things they wouldn't usually do. So Noi Mensa looking confident. He's doubling up on that left hook as this first round comes to a close here in Dubai. Competitive opening round between these two. First of eight. We had a couple of very early nights. Uh, our first two contests on the card. But 
Well, this one looks to be going a little bit longer. Touch wood. Yeah, but I think so, Chris. When you look at the styles here, I don't think either have the power to hurt one another. Um, so usually you'll see one of them. I think kind of, I think with De Bruyne, with the, the better boxing ability, you may see him just get behind that jab and try and nick the rounds and win this fight. Um, both look in decent shape, so I don't think there's an issue with conditioning. So, yeah, I think it'd be a case of now De Bruyne trying to get behind his jab, trying to be busy with that, pick them shots, ones and twos, and move with with Noy Mentor. I think it's about ups, ups, up, up, upsetting De Bruyne as much as he can, outwork him, and try and set the tempo of this fight. Yeah, well, against uh, Otto Joseph in his last fight in Lagos, Joseph started fast and I think he was just pushed back and gave up ground a little too easily, Mentor, and that just set the tempo of the contest and he found himself trying to kind of claw back rounds and of course the shoulder went too and that was you know, almost then an impossible task for him and the referee waved it off to uh, the disappointment really of the crowd in his corner but I don't think he was ever really going to, to win the fight, he was having to do a lot of work to, to stay in it but we know he's got heart, we know he can fight through that kind of pain, never easy when something like that happens in the early stages of a contest, let alone the middle or the late stages, but didn't have his Danny Williams, Mark Potter moment, unfortunately. And he's just been backed into the corner here mm. by De Bruyne. I've just seen Neumann say, he's, for some reason, he's come out this second round and he's bringing the jab back to his chest, so De Bruyne needs to start looking for that right hand, bring it over, and I'm sure he'll have success. Doesn't need to be here, Neumann, so he needs to move away from the ropes, get back to the centre of the ring and start his work again. Does not need to be stuck in the corner against someone who can yeah, very, fight like De Bruyne. Yeah, very early, isn't it, to be in, in that position in a, in a contest while the legs are fresh. He wants to be sticking and moving, and he's a good boxer when he's on the move too. But just as you say, holding his feet and getting stuck where he doesn't need to be at this stage. And De Bruyne has had a, a good start to this second round. Nice one too there. This is a good reply from De Bruyne. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a great opening round for Neumann Mensa. Probably had the better of the action, if I'm honest. And he had to come out and grab this fight by the horns, and that's exactly what De Bruyne's done. He's not allowed Neumann Mensa to get involved at all. He backs him into the corner. Good response from De Bruyne. But this is better for him from Mensa when he's at centre ring and he's just mm. uh, taking shots on the gloves and then coming back and, and pushing. De Bruyne back. It seems to be when he's having a little bit more success. That was slip left hook there. And when he gives up ground, it gives De Bruyne that momentum that he kind of needs as a, as a front foot fighter. You know, Neumann, so usually when you hit the ropes, you're told to move away from them. But Neumann, so he seems to just be happy to stay on the ropes and with the tempo that De Bruyne fights at, that's, that's the wrong thing, you know, he'll, he'll be under the cosh throughout this contest, he needs to move, get back to the centre and try to push the Bruyne back, because in the first round he had plenty of success doing that. Yeah, and the thing is as well, De Bruyne, as we say, doesn't cut the ring off well, you see he's almost turned himself back against the ropes there, which he absolutely didn't need to do, and, and that gives Mensah, if he wants it, a very easy exit point, as soon as his back does touch the ropes, it's not as if he's in against the guy that's going to cut him off and, and make that space small just needs to uh, pick his spots not just when to fight in the ring but where at the moment he's not doing that too exactly. well he's not I've got that around a piece Chris um, good action from De Bruyne they started the round like I said it was a good response after the uh, I, mean, I mean fair to say poor first round from him I think you know he uh, allowed Neumann Mensa to, to sort of get hold of the, the first round and outwork him but um Good response in the second round, but Neumann Mensa come back into the, the, the round at the end there, getting busy with his shots again, and kind of a, a strange contest after two rounds, if I'm honest. Neither willing to grab this fight by the, the scruff of the neck and, you know, go out there and announce himself in the contest. So be interesting to see how the next couple of rounds play out. Yeah, I think as we're seeing it, probably uh, a round apiece here for Anthony De Bruyne and Emmanuel Neumann Mensa. Six to go here in Dubai for the 
vacant UBO Intercontinental lightweight title. Men circles in the white shorts and De Bruyne in the black trunks trim with gold. And now De Bruyne starting to really put those hands together. Mm. Good work there, Chris. Head, body, dropping hooks to the body, coming back to the head. That was good work from De Bruyne. We need to see more of that. Mensa defensively is, uh, is quite good. He's in that classic Philly shell defense. Seems to be slipping and sliding quite well. He sees a lot coming on the ropes. Not too much landing clean. And that jab is, is nice. Doesn't fall over the front foot with it. Just trying to break that rhythm up of De Bruyne. But really, as you mentioned in the last round, defensively, or rather offensively, he's better when he's actually on the front foot, pushing De Bruyne back a little bit because he doesn't look as comfortable on the back foot uh, as Mensa does. No, he's, he, he's not. Uh, he likes to be the aggressor, likes to set the pace and likes to be on the front foot. So definitely Noy Mensa should be trying to hold the centre ring like he is now, trying to push the Bruyne back and let his hands go and try and turn this into a bit of a dogfight. And he has got a nice left hook, Mensa. Landed it a couple of times in the last round and just landed it a few moments ago. Every time he does, just this pushes the Bruyne back with relative ease here. Now he's got De Bruyne back into the corner, just walking him down again, trying to make that space small. And well, he, he seems to be in this pattern at the moment, and certainly the last couple of rounds, of giving away the first 45 seconds to a minute of the round, and then coming on strong in the, in the second half. Just wonder whether that's part of the plan here. But arguably, you'd like to see him start faster and just test the engine and the conditioning of, of De Bruyne. Absolutely. I mean, as far as uh, trying to get into the, the mind of the judges that that's not a bad ploy to, to end the round well but yeah like you say if he was to put it on De Bruyne really set the pace be interesting to see how De Bruyne would respond looking for that right hand again over the much. top yeah landed the second one there didn't he much more cleanly swings in again Mensa's just ro rocking and rolling on the ropes with some of these shots starting to get through Referee just breaks them apart and De Bruyne back at distance as Mensa just tries to walk him down now. Again, head movement's good from the Ghanaian. This is better. He just needs to let his hands go more, Chris. On the front foot, put you know, punches in bunches. This is better. More aggression is what's needed from Noy Mensa in this contest. Yeah, looking very evenly matched through three rounds. That was a mm. much closer round between the, the pair of them. Could have it either way at the end of uh, the third. Of course, this one only over eight rounds for a title. And then just one more fight between this one and our main event. We switch over to coresports.world for the second exhibition contest of the 2018 World's Strongest Man, the best deadlifter in history. One of the stars of HBO's Game of Thrones, Hatthorpe, Julius Bjornsson, on that collision course with the Beast Eddie Hall, September 18th. The pre-sale starts on the 3rd of June, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But tonight, all eyes on his opponent, Simon Valilli, the 2010 heavyweight gold medalist from the Commonwealth Games, 17-3 and three as a professional will offer a real stern test for Big Thor in the ring tonight. About 80 pounds of weight between them. And Valili is no small man either. It's going to be a fascinating contest. That, not too far away now. But we're into the fourth round here between Anthony de Bruyne in the black trunks trim with gold from the Netherlands and Emmanuel Neumensa from the Ghanaian capital of Accra with his back to the ropes in the white shorts. Nice little counter left hook there off the ropes. And then exits to the left. Mensa, De Bruyne, as he has done in the last couple of rounds, starting fast. But it never seems to last. No, De Bruyne needs to sustain this. Keep the attack going. Keep Louis Mensa on the back foot. But for some reason, whether, you know, I can't work out if it's he switches off or Louis Mensa switches on. <laughs> it's a strange pattern yeah. to, to the contest so far. Um, usually, you know, when you're the aggression and you've got the fight where you want it, then keep your momentum going. But he seems to switch off and, and allow Neumensa into the contest. 
But this is a good round, a uh, good opening round for for the Bruin. Start this third round. Yeah, De Bruyne having to aim for the, the body and the chest because Mensa's moving out ahead really well when he is on the ropes. Not easy to catch clean. Could you see there that right hand just whistling by the cheek of the Ghanaian fighter? And again, just dipping, slipping, and rolling. And it can be exhausting when you've got somebody that is that hard to, mm. to catch clean when you're throwing as much leather as De Bruyne is. And then Mensa just picks his spots to box his way back to centre ring. It's clever stuff from the Ghanaian. It is very slippery, awkward to, to land clean. De Bruyne at times has loaded up, so he will feel the, the pace as this contest goes on. Also there we see with Neumensa, he's very crafty on his feet when he wants to as well. He can take the range away and the distance away from De Bruyne. Very sharp, just moving out of range. But then what he does do wrong is he stays on the ropes for far too long and it allows De Bruyne to get his shots off which is obviously pleasing to the un... I don't know what happened there. Clash of heads. Yeah, he's indicating that it was a, a, a clash of heads. It must have been. So you may have heard the referee just asking for the ringside physician to come up and have a look at uh, Emmanuel Mensa. I'm not sure he wants to know too much more of this, Chris. Uh, just getting him to, to check the cheekbones and the upper palate. Obviously a, a heavy clash of heads, but as you say, it's, it's a case of he's just looking for a way out or is he ready to yeah, rock fair and roll play. again? He comes back to centre ring. Usually in a contest, you don't want to show any sign of weakness. So that's why I was surprised that he was indicating to the referee that he was in some sort of pain or distress. But credit to Neumann, so he's back there fighting in the centre of the ring and trying his best to win this contest. Back on the ropes in that Philly Shell defence, just trying to roll those shots, comes back with the left hook off the ropes. Mensa, De Bruyne, stiff jab upstairs. Just trying to pick his shots this is where you, up, shoots you know, the uppercut through the middle. Sorry Chris, this is where you, you, know, you hear the phrase ring craft and ring generalship. It's, knowing how to manage a fight, knowing how to win the rounds, and you can see the inexperience of both men. They're not too sure of how to, to, to navigate themselves through the contest. Yeah, that was a strange little patch in that round, as you say, that was my instinct too. It was just, was he looking for uh, a way out? But obviously there was a, a, a clash of heads, which made things difficult for him. We may some point get a replay a little later on but uh, for now I have to assume that the heads did come together so we're heading into the fifth round here and now it's a, an even-ish contest you say De Bruyne is starting to mm. pull ahead here he's the aggressor in this contest not making it easy though Mensa for him to land upstairs and he's had the better part of a couple of the earlier rounds but getting over the halfway point of this contest now somebody as you said earlier has got to stamp their authority on the contest got to take the the ball by the horns as they say so into the fifth now Anthony De Bruyne and Emmanuel Neumensa for the vacant UBO intercontinental lightweight title here at the Comrade Hotel in Dubai Mensa just giving up ground a little too easily Again, holding his feet now, trying to take those shots on the gloves. De Bruyne letting the hands go, miss with the right hand. But every time you see the, the start of the round, you really feel like De Bruyne is, is turning the screw and really starting to put his foot down. But I'm sure we'll see it again in this round. He, he somehow, some reason, lets Mensa, Neu Mensa, into the contest. But again, it's a good aggressive start for me. The last couple of rounds, De Bruyne just doing more in the three minutes. More, uh, enough to win the round, you know. Putting his shots together well, head, body, and trying his best to put a dent into Neu Mensa. And this probably is the best start to a round that De Bruyne's had. Good action. Again there, De Bruyne just backs off and lets him out the corner, giving in the, the exit points, making it too easy for him. And very strange pattern to, to every single round. It's the same 
and you kind of expect that it will change but instead of cutting the ring off making it small and, and keeping the pressure on it just steps off and Lex Mensa back into the contest and well from what we have seen of, of the Bruinies solid going forwards not quite as good boxing on the back foot no. seems to voluntarily give that space up and just a little bit of welts below the right eye of, of the Bruin now just, just an indication of the jabs and the left hooks from Mensa that have been getting through on the face of the Netherlands fighter and this is does where typically Mensa has started wins. to come on strong yeah, it does have four stoppage wins, Mensa. So perhaps De Bruyne has felt the power in there at, at times and has decided to step off. Um, but look, I, I think if all goes well for De Bruyne, which I, look, it's not much in this fight, but if you were to ask me who I think is going to win this contest, I'd say De Bruyne. As long as he's got a good good coaching team and they watch this fight back, there's a lot to work with De Bruyne. You know, he's, not, you know, he's a decent fighter got the fundamentals, he fights at a good tempo, he's got a good jab that is so important, being this the, the most important shot in boxing. So, like I say, uh, if he does get through this contest, there is a, a, a lot to work with with De Bruyne. Bruin back to work now, just starting to rip to the body and Mensa trying to rock and roll in that corner but getting stuck where he doesn't need to be, catches a right hand and then a left. Is he in a little bit of trouble, the man from Accra? Oh no, he comes back at him right at the end of that fifth round. But the Bruin feels like that was a, a big round for him and I think we would probably agree with him, Darren. Yeah, he's... Uh... He's getting the better of this this contest now. Um, he's, he's a lot busier picking the shot. Noi Mensa having success, but the, the success is more limited now. It's not as often as it was in the opening couple of rounds. Um, I think the class is starting to shine through from De Bruyne. So deep breaths from... Mensa with three rounds to go here in Dubai before we head to our penultimate contest of the night and then on to the main event Hathor Bjornsson against Simon Valili here in Dubai so where we go then into round six of eight the 135 pound division is Anthony De Bruyne starting to wear Emmanuel Neumensa down is that inactivity from the Ghanaian just starting to tell as we enter the business part of this contest yeah he didn't really want to bite down on the gum shield from the off Neumensa so maybe he, there are issues or, or concerns at the back of his head that he may not be fit enough but De Bruyne the complete opposite he, he, he's tried to be busy I mean he has let Neumenser in the contest at times but throughout the the rounds you know he has tried to pop out the jab he has tried to let his shots go in twos and threes and and try to be the aggressor more often and I think again now you're starting to see the the class shine through from De Bruyne yeah, he's not won any round really conclusively. Just run the ones that he has, no. kind of 70-30. But Mensa has had his share of even the rounds that, that he has lost, but just been a little bit negative at times with his back to the ropes. Done a, a nice job of slipping and making De Bruyne miss, but hasn't really come back with anything, just enough to, to catch your attention and, and feel like he's really in the contest. Yeah, look. Scoring is subjective. Um, it's what you like. For me, when I'm trying to score a three-minute bout, I try and break it into to one minutes. And who done the most in that three minutes by looking at the one minutes I've, I've judged it on? And for me, De Bruyne has been that man. You know, I think he's worked probably two minutes of the round where he's let Mensa in. And credit to, to Noy Mensa. He's still having a go. But the pace has dropped from him. He's not letting his hands go like he was in the middle part of those rounds moving his head still trying to make it difficult for De Bruyne 
De Bruyne's tempo has dropped slightly. He needs to keep pumping that jab out, head, body. When you're having a round off, if we're going to call this from uh, De Bruyne, you need to be busy with the, with the jab still. Plenty of feints. Keep your opponent thinking. You can't just let him plow forward. Yeah, there are ways to, to still win a round that you, you're taking off. Mm. As you say, with uh, sort of 30% power shots, just popping the jab out, moving and looking busy, even if you're not doing too much, just to let the, the system recover and then go into to seven and eight strong. Typically, fighters in a 12-rounder will take the, the seventh or the eighth off if they feel that they're in charge and they've had a good first half of the contest. Yeah. I'm sure you would have done that stages of your career just to come on strong in the ninth, tenth, and then, of course, into the championship rounds as well. well that is the uh, end of the sixth round with two to go here. And Tony De Bruyne just starting to take charge of this contest. So we're about to go to round seven of our scheduled eight for this title fight. Please put your hands together for the Core Sports Ring Girls. So if uh, Noy Mensah has any chance of winning this contest, he needs he needs two big rounds here. He, he really does. I mean, he needs to, to work work away because I've got De Bruyne up by a, three rounds here. So it's important that Noy Mensah gives it everything here. But I just don't feel he has it in in the tank to cause any problems to De Bruyne. We will see. Well, De Bruyne has come out firing in this seventh round with uh, under six minutes to go in this contest. Starting to really put the shots together. Hook off the jab. He's pushed Mensa back in the early stages of this round. to rip into the body now just missed that left hook upstairs not by much and he's pushed the Netherlands fighter back good back and forth action here in the seventh and these two know that they're starting to approach the finish line here in Dubai minute and a half to go in this round oh nice chopping right hand there from Tony De Bruyne We heard Mensa's corner just calling for that check left hook and as De Bruyne stepped in, he answered the call. Jab from Mensa, good head movement from the Ghanaian. Close to seventh round here. And check left hook again as De Bruyne steps into range. And De Bruyne trying to put the pressure on as this one comes to a close. This round's absolutely flown by. Again, he leads off with that left hook. Enter comes back, right hand, misses with the left. And well, we will see the final round between these two. 
And the vacant UBO Intercontinental lightweight title is up for grabs. Mensa has certainly had the share of these rounds. Has it been enough, though? Mr. Bruins' funk foot pressure. And heavier shots just been the difference between the pair of them. Can Mensa rally and find something big in this final round? First time in action for over two years. The Ghanaian. And his mouth guard goes in for the final time in this contest. So I expect Noy Mensa to throw everything to De Bruyne now. He needs to. But it's a little too late. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to, isn't he, Darren, at this stage. He's got to have something big in this final three minutes. He'll learn a lot from this De Bruyne. We'd like to think he would, you know. Uh, and we spoke about it earlier on in the contest, about knowing how to manage a contest. That would... We're talking about an eight-rounder here, and you'd like to think that he'll progress and he'll go through the rounds 10, 12, and he'll need more experience, and this, is, this will be a blessing in disguise. Yeah, De Bruyne on the front foot, back in Mensa into the corner. will sense at this stage that he's done enough to take victory if they, one goes to points at the end of this round. Reaches in with that long right hand to the body. Mensa perhaps signalling to keep them up. I think that was good. And he sticks another right hand in down to the midsection. Is he trying to set something up upstairs? He is. Comes yep. through with a combination. That was perfect stuff. Really nicely worked. You could see what he was trying to do and he did it well. And Mensa didn't see it coming. Now having to rock and roll to avoid those shots on the ropes. Is he a bit hurt here? It's the variation, Chris. Head and body. It really mixes up the levels, changes the levels well keeping Mensa thinking all the time but good head movement but this doesn't need to be stuck in the corner on the ropes like he is he's allowing De Bruyne to, to have his own way here I know it is the, the final round but still um, making life difficult for himself I'm not too sure what that was about looked like maybe a bit of showboating on, on the ropes mm. here he beckons him on <laughs> but he's going to need to do something the wrong here time to be showboating, showboating. It certainly is, yeah, and, and well, he's going a bit drunk and master himself it. <laughs> Clearly these youngsters have got hold of a, an Emmanuel Augusta CD somewhere down the line. <laughs> Interesting stuff, strange to stuff to be doing in the last round when, you, when you're losing the contest. Instead of biting down in your gum shield and letting your shots go. I don't think showboat. Well, it's, it's the body language of someone who, who thinks he's won, isn't it, I guess? <laughs> yeah. Maybe the judges are seeing something different to uh, to what we have. He certainly had his share of the rounds, Mensa, no doubt about it. He's certainly been competitive all the way through throughout the contest. Mm. Just has he done has he done enough to to really, as you said early, take the contest by the scruff of the neck and and win that title? I'm not so sure, but uh, a subjective sport. We're never ever surprised by the uh, the judging in boxing, so we will not commit to anything at this stage or we'll wait to see but it looks like this one is going to go the full distance as the clock ticks down between Anthony De Bruyne and Emmanuel Neumensa as the two embrace the centre ring a competitive lightweight title contest for the UBO Intercontinental belt and one of these two will go home with the strap the, the scrap it was, it was an interesting one Darren I mean say the the pattern of most of the rounds was De Bruyne starting stronger on the front foot, letting his hands go, Mensa being pushed back a little bit too easily. But whether you say it was the fact that the Ghanaian was working his way back into the rounds or whether De Bruyne yeah. was letting him back in, it was actually quite hard to tell. But the, the fact remains that he was having the better portion of the, of the latter parts of each of the rounds that we saw. It, uh, for me, it was that second right, minute. Are. The judges are conferring. So
in the meantime, uh, I'll ask you please to buy, and of course, our global audience around the world, put your hands together for these two warriors of the ring. They've gone the full eight. Uh, put your hands together for our two fighters, Emmanuel and Tony. I was going to say, it's that second minute of each round, especially early on, that Neumensa got to work, but then allowed De Bruyne back into the contest or the, the, the round with a, with a strong finish. So, you know, it's, it's if the judges liked what Neumensa did in the middle part of the early rounds. But for me, there's only one winner there. De Bruyne done enough uh, to win that by three, four rounds. And that he needs to learn from that. It wasn't perfect. Um, he is a work in progress, but um, like I said before, a lot to work with, Chris. So we are one fight away from our main so event, the but uh, first up is Sommer. The full eight rounds. This, of course, the vacant UBO Intercontinental lightweight title. The belt is alongside me, being held by Aaron at the moment. Uh, will with this belt go? Well, we have a unanimous decision. Ringside, judges, Judge Walid uh, scores it 79 to 73. Judge Gary scores it 80 to 72. Judge Michael scores it 79 to 73. The unanimous decision, and now the UBO Intercontinental Lightweight Champion is... Anthony De Bruyne! I think Emmanuel Neumens was holding out hope there in vain. Anthony De Bruyne, the winner of the contest, and he takes over the vacant UBO Intercontinental lightweight title. Congratulations to him. Coach wants the mic. Coach wants the mic. But I'm going to get his boy to have a quick word now. Coach uh, and Antonio alongside me at the moment. Uh, we've also got the uh, fee in the town as well. So, Tony, let's get your thoughts on that fight. Uh, you remain unbeaten. How's it feeling? It's an amazing feeling, man. It's really an amazing feeling to get out on a show like this. Uh, I've been out of the Dubai boxing for like a bit more than a year, so it's great to come back with a title on a, on a great show like this. Man. Talk to me about the opponent for this evening's, this afternoon's fight. Put up a tough fight. Oh, man, I just had a fight in Ghana, so I know the Ghanaians are tough, you know, and that's why I selected him. You know, he's a, he's a tough opponent, um, and uh, I think it, it, will gave me a, it gave me a good experience, man. What's next for you? Obviously, you're going to have a bit of time with the team as well. Uh, but what's, re what's the remainder of 2021 hold? And what's next for Tony? I'm looking to get a fight next in, a, in the next couple, couple months. Uh, and hopefully close the year with another three more fights. We'll see what's next. Tony, you put on a great show. Obviously, a lot of thanks must go to the team behind you as well. Any thank yous that you'd like to give now? I don't know where to start, man. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to my, my sponsors. Thank you to Khalid. Thank you, my, my, my brother Jose, my manager, uh, my trainers, my team, everybody for sparring me, training me, helping me out, my friends. Thank you, everybody, man. Big love. You've got some great support out there as well. Uh, final one from me, cheeky one. Holland to win the Euros this year? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Holland to win the Euros this year? Absolutely, man. <laughs> All the best, Tony. Uh, enjoy. Uh, congratulations to you, Tony. Well done to you. Congratulations to Tony. We're going to get a quick word with Emmanuel as well, if we can, uh, just to get his thoughts uh, on that fight. So our victor, Anthony de Bruyne, calling Holland for the Euros this year. Manu, can we have a quick word with you? Is that okay? A quick word with you, a quick word. How did you feel the fight went? Oh, the fight was very good. He's a good opponent. Um, I, I'm trying to give him a, a good show because I see that he's a good boxer. You gave us a good show. You went eight rounds. You've obviously got the stamina as well. Are you happy with the performance? Oh, I, I don't have anything to say, but it's good performance. Uh, and a quick final one for the corner as well. You've got your boys behind you. Any thank yous that you'd like to give? But, oh, that, that, uh, I want to thank my coach and the promoter and everybody here. I want to thank everybody. It's a very good show. Mate, you put on a great show. You are a star. Manu, bless you. Thank you very much indeed to Emmanuel Neumensa of Ghana. And of course, your winner. And now the UBO Intercontinental Lightweight Champion, Anthony De Bruyne.
Yeah, many congratulations to Tony De Bruyne there. I think uh, a worthy victor in the end, Darren. And uh, well, it's always a relief when the judges do see the fights as you think you've seen them at the commentary desk. Not always the way. <laughs> no, we've seen we've seen some bad ones, Chris, haven't we? Yeah, we have. But uh, that one was. Uh, that one was pretty fair. I think that Mensa, as we said, had a fair share of yeah. the rounds. Certainly won the latter portion of uh, some of the early rounds. But just as time wore on, the Bruins' strength and physicality, shot selection and I think effective aggression is really what you would call it, was uh, the difference between uh, the pair of them. And Tony Bruin will go home with but that. Uh, going away short. Uh, big thanks UBO. to all of you for being with us down here at the Core Sports Brunch with a punch, live from Dubai, live from the Conrad Dubai. We'll have our penultimate fight, which will be a cruiserweight fight for you in just a few moments' time. And then, of course, the main event, an exhibition match uh, of none other than Herthor Bjornsson, who will be taking on Simon Valili. Uh, it is the man from the UK against the man mountain from Iceland. Two big men slugging out in the Titan weight of eight a little later in proceedings. Got plenty of strong men with us here tonight. Uh, the strongest man out of Scotland. Uh, of course, one of the founders of the world's ultimate strongman, Mr. Mark Boyd, is with us here. Still the strongest man out of Scotland and with us here tonight. So great to have Marky with us here. And great to have so many uh, boxing royalty with us here as well. We got Paulie Weir here, uh, also one of the strongest men out of Scotland, the pride of Glasgow. Scotland, the former undefeated WBO minimum weight champion and the former WBO light flyweight champion of the world with us here in tonight but also with us here in Dubai and doing great things for the sport of boxing here in Dubai. So our thanks to Paulie Weir. Escape to the most tropical island with the most tropical flavor. Not that kind of flavor. That kind. Then add a floral punch of lychee slammed into a tangy burst of little corn. Give it zero sugar, but still make it taste good. Paradise good. Then pack it with power so you can outdo you. That's what goes into New Rain Lilacoy Lychee. A total body fuel. Oh, Lich. There is a stronghold. It will be heavily guarded. Of course it is. It's the most valuable thing in the world. We will send a dozen Viking ships through the landing. And raid, pillage, until we make it there. No survivors! Yeah! Yeah! We are in the hands of Ogun! Yeah! So are you guys doing all of this just for some beer oil? Yeah. 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 Are you looking to let your hair down and have a good time? Well, look no further. Check. Skinny Isaacs Belfast, Northern Ireland's premier hair house, has all the tools to satisfy your needs. Choose from our lineup of high quality barbers. Maybe it's time you paid a visit to the hair house. Barker with you for this evening's proceedings. We are just one fight away from our main event. Wherever you're watching, you'll be able to switch over to courtsports.world to watch the main event for free this afternoon or this evening, depending on where you are uh, around the world. And uh, Hatfield Bjornsson, Darren, in his uh, second exhibition contest after a very decent run out against Stephen Ward. This one against Simon Valili, uh, and win or lose tonight, a very, very smart way to prepare for that big fight with Eddie Hall, because as we know, you can 
put in as much work in the gym as you want. You can do as much sparring as you want, and he has done plenty, but nothing really quite prepares you for that first big fight night. No, I mean, credit to Bjornsson is exactly what he needs to be doing. He needs to be getting in the ring under those bright lights and experiencing what fight night's all about. And I'm surprised that Eddie Hall's not gone down that road himself. But another thing I'll give Bjornsson credit for is the, the calibre of opponent that he's got in there with. Stephen Ward absolutely uh, knows his way around the ring, a very good fighter. Uh, and so is Simon Valili. Valili, though, he has this red mist, this fire that that makes him a, a real handful for anyone. He just likes to get stuck in, load up with big shots. He's spiteful. Uh, and like we said uh, a couple of fights ago, you know, he, he this is his opportunity to, to make a real statement. You know, who knows where this could lead to if he was to win. I'm not going to say it's going to open massive doors, but it will get people talking about Simon Villi, that's for sure. Yeah, he has shared the ring with uh, probably the best, well, in fact, definitely the best cruiserweight in the world at mm. present in Myris Breedis, who was the World Boxing Super Series winner over Uniel Dortikos. Darren, you and I were lucky enough to fly out and call that fight uh, in Munich in, in September. But he's had a uh, kind of up and down performances, as we say, lost a very good young heavyweight in Fabio Wardley recently. But he was also blown away by Craig Glover in a very, very strange performance. I think maybe he was concussed early on in that contest but but his body language and everything was was very very odd and he is a, a bit of an unusual character he is a bit of a wayward character he was really highly touted by uh the the gb boxing performance director rob mccracken of course heads up the uh the best of our amateur system as well as being in the uh the corner for anthony joshua he believed that valili was going to win the olympics in london um but such has been the story of his amateur and pro career. Life kind of got in the way of what could have been for this man. And there's always someone you've looked at when he boxes and think, yeah, he's got a lot of talent. There's a lot to like about him. But, you know, he's missed weight in a few key contests. And, you know, I think really he's, he's let his career pass him by. And now at the age of 35, he, he's looking for big opportunities to make a statement. If he was to go out and do something here against Hathor Bjornsson, it, it would be a huge story just because of the size of, of Bjornsson's profile globally wouldn't it yeah absolutely um certainly simon valili like you said there has bundles of talent he really does for to, to have a coach like rob mccracken saying that he he, he fancies valili to potentially go on and win the olympics is a huge statement he, he doesn't mix his words at all rob but i think it's been life outside of the ring hasn't been kind to, to simon and he's made some bad decisions you could call them and that's been a shame because I, I'm a fan of his I like watching his his boxing you know he's a he's a good good tactician but he can punch and um he has that that bit of aggression that rawness that makes him very exciting so look I, I think today he won't treat this as an exhibition he will bite down on his gum shield he'll try and land big shots and you know that that saying you know the bigger they are the harder they fall I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll be trying his best to to, to make that happen and who knows what could happen for Simon Villili if he if he can win this on the flip side I think Beyonce needs to somehow uh, he, he did show how good he was on the back foot last time but I'd like to see him on the front foot now trying to get that weight into play trying to rough up Simon Villili and and, and cause a uh, I don't know if you'd call it an upset or what but somehow get his size into the contest and make it count yeah, because he was quite back foot against uh, Stephen Ward and all of the sparring clips that are available. He seems to box in that style, try and keep things long. I mean, he is a huge man after all, six foot nine. He'd be easily the biggest heavyweight in the world were he to turn professional. And he is a southpaw too, which of course can cause its own set of complications. I've watched him spar and be caught with a straight right hand down the middle on a few occasions. And just the, that will, of course, be the big concern when he does face off against Eddie Hall, who's a, a similar size, height and reach-wise, to, to Valili. But, of course, uh, I mean, a completely different weight. He's uh, 160 kilos or, or thereabouts, which translates to about 26 stone for those guys watching in the UK and about 340, 350 pounds um, for our, our friend stateside. These are two very, very big guys. And Bjornsson was 206 kilos when he broke Eddie Hall's world record in the deadlift at 501 i mean it was a ridiculously comfortable pull for a weight that's never been lifted off the floor before and for such a, a tall man an impressive uh, feat to say the least but what's been more impressive is to see him 
come back down to what 152 kilos as he weighed in on Thursday and look in such unbelievable condition, light on his feet. Uh, I'm sure he feels a million dollars because living so far above your natural weight, 206 kilos, and, and listening to what he had to eat every single day to maintain that body weight, it just sounded absolutely awful. And I know, I know a joke is on its way about my eating <laughs> habits somewhere, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but honestly, I mean, crikey, what what a weight to walk around at, at 460 pounds for you know the best part of eight months to break a world record, come down and uh, and be in the, the physical condition he's in says a huge amount about his dedication mm. uh, and ability as an athlete above everything else. Absolutely, first thing, there's no way that Beyonce eats more than you, even in his prime. That, that's impossible. <laughs> um, but yeah, f absolute credit for for him like we said before taking it serious doing this properly dropping the weight and like you said there looking in tremendous condition you know absolutely ripped carved out of stone um and i'm just just really taking this this seriously and um yeah i, look, I think that for him it's about trying to to quicken his hands up I think that was the only thing that was missing really you know it, like I said obviously he's a work in progress but he just needs to sharpen up with his hands I think speed is crucial uh, and try and get his size into play uh, and for for Simon Valilius <laughs> it's about not getting hit you know it, you do not want to get, be getting hit by a guy that is that heavy and we, we see against Ward look, that that was never a knockdown when it, when he dropped Stephen Ward but there was times there when he winged in those shots uh, you know, literally, almost like a cricket cricketer bowling a ball. Some of those shots, if they was to land on the point of the chin, then no, nobody's getting up. Yeah, he doesn't need to load up with with big shots when you have that much weight behind you and you've got that much reach. The the, the sort of the physics works itself out. You, you don't need to yep. to try and sit down into to big heavy punches. Everything you throw, by definition, is going to be hurtful. Um, like you say, it's about staying light on your feet. One thing that Stephen Ward said to me uh, yesterday on the phone was how surprised he was, not just about Thor's agility, but about his conditioning. He said, you know, we started off and you have a move around. And he said, obviously, it's impossible to prepare for somebody that big because there isn't anyone else around that, that, that's that big. He says, you have to get in the ring and you have to just have a look at him and see what the pace is like. And he said he was quick on his feet. And I thought, wow, this is... Uh, this is this is quicker than I expected him to be. But he said, I thought, oh, it's okay. He'll slow down within the next couple of minutes. He said, but three rounds later, he said he was still so light. So we're from the change sharp. rooms. We need and, another uh, seven minutes, eight minutes or so. Strapping is continuing in the change rooms. Fighters will be in the corridor. They will be ring bound in right about eight minutes time. Eight minutes time. Oh, well, there you go. That's, uh, that's answered my next question was how long until the, uh, the penultimate contest of the <laughs> afternoon? A uh, cruiserweight bout and Tom uh, Tom Urquhart just giving us an update there. The fighters backstage just getting gloved up and, uh, and doing their wrap. Seven minutes to go uh, here in Dubai. Just a quick thank you to our sponsors. Rain, of course, the presentation partner. The Beard Struggle, Buka, who the glove sponsor. And Bajil, who are at the forefront of PCR testing, keeping us all safe during these testing times. And, of course, our secondary sponsors. Uh, Karasti, Soapy Joe's Laundry, Coles, Health and Wellness and... Cannon. It's been a really, really good event here and it's just wetting the, the taste buds for the September the 8th clash between Hapthorpe, Julius Bjornsson, world's strongest man from 2018 and Eddie Hall, the man who won it the previous year. And Darren, I, I know you're not a massive strongman fan. I certainly am and I can remember their rivalry just two or three years ago. I remember that they, they started off as respectful competitors and things just sort of denigrated into that dislike that you often get with top level professional sports when they were so evenly matched on so many disciplines uh, and there were so many closely fought contests between them and uh, the year that Eddie Hall picked Thor to the uh, the victory of World's Strongest Man Thor really wasn't happy with a couple of the judges calls and it, it sparked a, a whole load of controversy that I think the two felt they needed to settle it in a different way and um, what better time uh, and what better way to do it these days when we see so many crossovers than to lace them up and, and go toe to toe. But I, I've got to be honest, I can't see it going the distance. Can you? No, it won't go the distance. It's a fact. Then, do you know what? I know this is the Bjornsson uh, Valili show, but I'm still scratching my head. At, I guess you could call it the lack of preparation on Andy Hall's part. Like, I just don't understand why he's not doing this because. 
let me tell you, for someone that's boxed for so long, the, the nervous energy that, that builds up, it is incredible and it honestly you can you can train your socks off but when you've not experienced something uh, before that nervous energy can take away I don't know a good 30 40 percent of your of your fitness just through burning it mm. up through that nervous energy like I talk about and timing and distance etc look I don't know what Eddie Hall's doing but behind closed doors but what I do know is, is I'm taking my hat off to Beyonce yeah, absolutely. Good preparation for him. And, uh, of course, we'll find out whose preparation has been the best on September the 18th. Remember that pay-per-view pre-sale for Hatfield Bjornsson and Eddie Hall goes on sale 3rd of June. So keep your eyes out for that. For more information, head to uh, courtsports.world. And, of course, you will be heading to courtsports.world for our main event after our penultimate contest that is coming up uh, here in Dubai next. Uh, we'll be right back after this. Escape to the most tropical island with the most tropical flavor. Not that kind of flavor. That kind. Then add a floral punch of lychee slammed into a tangy burst of lilac corn. Give it zero sugar, but still make it taste good. Paradise beer. Then pack it with power so you can outdo you. That's what goes into New Rain Lilacoy Lychee. A total body fuel. There is a stronghold. It will be heavily guarded. Of course it is. It's the most valuable thing in the world. We will send a dozen Viking ships through the landing and raid, pillage, until we make it there. No survivors! Yeah! Yeah! We are the hands of Odin! Yeah! So are you guys doing all of this just for some beer oil? Yeah. 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 Are you looking to let your hair down and have a good time? Well, look no further. Check. Skinny Eggs Ex Belfast, Northern Ireland's premier hair house, has all the tools to satisfy your needs. Choose from our lineup of high quality barbers. Maybe it's time you paid a visit to the hair house. Welcome back to the Conrad Hotel here in Dubai. This is the word from a few of our commercial partners ahead of the penultimate contest of the evening here. Had some decent wins already, not up by a few local fighters. And we're ready to rock and roll shortly for our chief support of the evening. Cruiserweight bout between the debutant Jamie King from the UK and Medhat El Husni, a Dubai resident by way of his home nation of Egypt. Hearing this, another 10 minutes until uh, those two ring walk. So if you are watching around the world, maybe put the kettle on, go and uh, have a cup of tea or whatever your your tipple of choice is and uh, get settled in because we'll be sh switching over after this contest to coresports.world uh, for our main event uh, of the afternoon. Chris Lloyd here with Darren Barker, uh, former world middleweight champion alongside me. And Darren, what a strange 12 months it's been in the world of boxing. I mean, we've uh, had the pleasure of calling some of the biggest fights in the world in the last couple of years. I don't think ever we, either of us ever thought we'd experience a 12 months like the, the last 12 have been. It, it, in, incredible. Uh, it's, been, it's been so strange. And like you say, we've been very lucky. We've been lucky to, to call some of the action back in the UK. And there's been some great fights. And credit to managers promoters and most importantly fighters for for getting in the ring and keeping fit and keeping in good condition and willing to take gambles and risks to to entertain us fans during which has been a, a terrible time but you know we've we've seen some cracking action back in the uk and hopefully we're in for some more this evening 
Yeah, hopefully so. Well, we've had uh, four fights on our, our televised bill. There were five amateurs uh, before that and just two to go. This one in the UK you'll be watching on, on IFL and uh, elsewhere globally. And we'll be switching over to coresports.world after this next contest to tune in for the big exhibition bout between Hatthor Bjornsson and Simon Valili. Our main event here in Dubai. Let's take a look back at some of the uh, replays from this afternoon's action. Our first contest of the evening, it went pretty short. with Bada Samreen in the white shorts against Moiz Alam from Egypt. Who, he was a game but overmatched the opponent, Darren. Didn't take long for Samreen to get rid of him. No, Samreen... Just weathered the storm early on. Credit to Alam. He'd come out, letting his hands go. He'd been inactive for, for five years. So he thought, look, I'm going to get out there and try and get the ring rust off as quick as class. Come through some Sareem. You know, he looked good. Picking his shots well. Head, body. And it was a spiteful right hand, left hook that finished the job. Put him down, Alim. And he never recovered, did he, Chris, after those, those big shots. And here's the finish. Lovely finish from Sareem. Yeah, and you know when a fighter falls like that, that it's uh, it's time to call it a day. And the referee did uh, absolutely the right thing there. So Bada Samreen from uh, Jordan moves to 2-0 and as a, as a professional. He's a decent uh, youth amateur, the Jordanian. And you can just see the pedigree and the shape and everything about his work there. He's, he's got some potential and, uh, and got a bit of talent. As has the man in the white trunk, Stefan Fonjo, moved to 4-0, and the Cameroonian, against Johan Bashazade from uh, Azerbaijan. It was a similar story, really, Darren, to, to the first contest, wasn't it? It was. Straight out, Fonjo grabbed the fight by the scruff of the neck and, and, and made it his and really roughed up his opponent and, and made life difficult for him. He couldn't miss with a right hand. He got wild with it at times, looping over the top of it. But when he kept it nice and straight, um, he, he was too much of a handful. And, uh, yeah, the referee did the right thing and uh, and called the called the action. But, yeah, Fonjo, there's a lot to like about him. He's a good fighter. Yeah, big, solid, super middleweight too. And it's a, it's a pretty thriving division. Saw Billy Joe Saunders and Canelo Alvarez in action uh, three or four weeks ago now as the pound-for-pound pound king just reasserted his dominance at the top of Boxing Street. Will Stefan Fonjo fancy his chances on the international circuit? As he goes up the levels, he moves to 4-0. and And as you say, plenty to like about him. Heavy hands, good shot selection, putting the punches together well. And overmatched against uh, Jehan Bashazade. would like to see him in against uh, someone that's going to offer him a little bit of resistance and, and something to uh, to answer to as well at some stage. Yeah, I'd like to see more of him. You know, he's a good fighter. There's a lot to work with. Like I say, he, you know, he's got every punch in his uh, artillery. So, it's, he, again, like a lot of these fighters on the show, they're a work in progress, but someone I want to see more of. And then the contest that uh, has just finished, it went eight rounds between uh, Anthony De Bruin in the black trunks with a gold trim and uh, Emmanuel Neumensa from the Ghanaian capital of uh, Accra in the white trunks. Well, it was, it was competitive action, but just De Bruin edging... The majority of, of the rounds, he was busier. He was the more come forward fighter and just put the shots together a little bit better and I think outworked uh, Mensa down the stretch, didn't he? Yeah, it was uh, it was an interesting fight. I think experience let both guys down uh, in, in this one. They just didn't know how to to be the boss in the contest. But uh, as the rounds went on, De Bruyne really sort of grabbed hold of the fight and made it his and started to work. But Noy Mensa, credit to him, there was patches in the middle rounds, uh, especially early on as well, the, the, that second minute, the middle of the, the three minutes, that he, he got to work and he made it interesting. But like I say, the, the, the class shone through in the end and uh, it was a well-deserved win for, for De Bruyne.
This is the uh, finish of the contest. For your patience, apologies for that. A uh, little delay in proceedings will be underway. And a big thank you to all of you for being with us here tonight. We're live from Dubai. We're live from the Conrad Dubai. This, the core sports brunch with a punch. Two more fights for you. The last pro fight will be followed by the titan weight clash when the man mountain from Iceland, uh, Hotho Bjornsson, takes on uh, the man mountain from Middlesbrough in England. Simon Villili, looking forward to that one. That one's coming your way shortly. Before that, we have, of course, uh, our cruiserweight 91kg bout. That's coming your way in a few moments' time. Just a quick reminder uh, that we are, of course, in a COVID-19 protocol bubble at the moment. All the athletes have been tested courtesy of the attentions of Bergil. Big thanks also to Booker for our glove sponsorship this afternoon. The Beard Struggle to reign our title sponsor, our presenting partner, and, of course, all the team at Rogue. Thanks also must go to Karasti, Soapy Joe's Laundry, uh, Coles Health and Wellness, and Cannon Middle East. On then with the fights, and we've got a real, real good one uh, to round up the professional card of the evening. This is bout number seven on your core sports brunch with a punch fight card. One more to go after this. Four rounds, uh, four three minute rounds coming your way in the cruiserweight division. 91 kg, both boxers uh, weighing in yesterday at the official weigh in right here at the Conrad Dubai at 91 kg. Both coming in uh, on the weight and coming into the ring now. Fighting out of the blue corner by way of the land of the pharaohs, the land of the pyramids from Egypt. Please welcome Medhat Al Husni. So we are finally ready for the ring walks for the penultimate contest of the night. Sorry about that uh, 15 minute intermission. I think a couple of the early fights went so early that uh, just given us a bit of time to make up and yet to listen to Minor Darren's musings, which, uh, well, depending on whether you enjoy that sort of thing or not, you either loved it or hated it. But here's Mel Al Husni. <laughs> He's, uh, well, it's fair to say, spaced his three professional fights out since turning pro 10 years ago pretty well. One in 2011, one in 2016, and one in March this year. He's 0-3. There's a great deal on him, uh, apart from that. The Egyptian man of mystery. Just the final stretch before he makes his way into the ring. Meadow will be fighting of the blue corner his opponent fighting out of the red corner returning to the ring for his very first debut professional fight he's got a massive fan base here in the uae this is when amateur becomes pro from the united kingdom Jimmy King. So there is Jamie King from the UK on the south coast making his debut in the cruiserweight division tonight has boxed on what I guess you would call the unlicensed circuit in the UK on the Phoenix MMA club shows it's in Bournemouth on the south coast for our international listeners or anyone in the north of England that hasn't ventured south of the border but uh, it's made his mark as one of the top mixed martial arts gyms in the UK. But as you heard from Tom, uh, Kuh, out there, he's got a big fan base here in Dubai. Them to, uh, the man with uh, th four fights, uh, three fights to his career thus far. Uh, three uh, losses to his name so far. Looking for his first win uh, on the pro circuit. He wears black shorts with the blue gloves. He is the pride of Egypt. He fights out of the blue corner. Let's hear it for Medhat al -Husni. And his opponent making his pro debut right here in Dubai tonight. 
massive fan base, big fan of the city. He fights in the black shorts with the black wear guard. He's got Paulie Weir in his corner. Let's hear it for, from the UK, Jamie King. This is four three minute rounds for this cruiserweight fight. Chaz in the ring. He calls him in. Give me a good clean fight. Anything from your navel upwards is good. Watch the rabbit punches and keep it clean. Touch him up. Good luck to the both of you. All respect in the ring. The fighters are ready. The rings are ready. We are ready. It's the final pro fight of the night. It's fight time. So four rounds for the Cruiserweight debut of uh, Southport, Jamie King. Oh, oh, steps in with a big double left hand. Already oh, he's, he's gone. Meta al -Husani and the Egyptian is down. And I don't think he's going to get up, Darren. What a start wow. to our chief support. And it's all over in seconds. Well, that was explosive. <laughs> Look at that. The left hand, big left hook, and that's it. Ahuzni flat on the canvas. What a finish from Jamie King. Three left hands went low. There was the first, there was the second. Stunned the Egyptian, oh. and the third just came round the side with it, swept it round and through the chin. And well, it was good to see him sitting up. But well, unfortunately, Darren, we mentioned at the beginning, he's had a very stop start career, three fights in. Uh, over a decade as a pro, that's really no way to, to go about your business. And well, you just wonder whether it's uh, time for him to, to kind of call it a day, really, because you can't be getting taken out like that in a, a pro ring, certainly against a debut Todd. And of course, this will be you know celebrations all round for, for Jamie King. But for El Husney, I think he needs to kind of assess so, what he's really doing with his uh, career at this stage. After just 16 seconds in the very first round, the winner by KO, out to the red corner, Jamie King! So a very, very comfortable and explosive win for Great Britain's Jamie King. Yeah, what a feeling. Thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, thought my adrenaline was going, so I'm not going to be able to say many words, but thank you for coming. I mean, 16 seconds, the first round, all the build-up to this fight. Your first pro fight as well, glittering amateur career. I mean, it went according to plan. Yeah, obviously, I'd like a few more rounds in there just to give you that confidence. But, you know, I hurt him in that first shot, so I was, I'm not going to sit here and waste time. If he's hurt, I'm going for it. I'm, I'm so, my, my, my left hand is so powerful. So if it can get me out of there, I'm going to do it. Massive support down there on the floor as well. Any thank yous? Everyone, everyone. Where's Aaron? Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. I'm done. And a quick one for your corner as well. You've got Paulie Weir, a former champion in the corner. Instrumental. What a guy. What a guy. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm around the right people. I'm around Aaron, I'm around Paul. And if I stay around them, I'll keep going. You've made a mark today. Congratulations. This is the man with the plan. Uh, he is, of course, the champion. Uh, congratulations to Jamie King. Yeah, well, he's going to have uh, a tougher test than that down the road, uh, Darren. Three left hands to, to finish the contest <laughs> inside the first 30 a seconds. Of our final pro fight, which means we got one more for you. Uh, the big one, it is the Titan weight fight coming away in just a few moments' time. The Man Mountain from Iceland, Hathor Bjornsson, takes on the Man Mountain from Middlesbrough, England, Simon Valili. Exhibition match, four rounds coming away in just a few moments' time. Absolute pleasure to have you with us. Uh, this evening, uh, this uh, brunch with a punch. And a huge thanks as well to all those that have turned out. We've spoken to some of the greats of the world of boxing. Paulie Weir here at the moment. Uh, we are blessed 
to be joined by a number of world champions with us here today, not just from the sport of boxing, but men that have been there, done that, winners of World Cups, European Championships, La Ligas, and of course, uh, the Euros themselves, the Champions League. Absolute pleasure to be joined by Ildue and San Ica over there on the table at the moment. Uh, Real Madrid and Spanish legends, Michel Salgado, who does so much for football here, and the man alongside of Ica Casillas, Thank you, fellas, for being with us. We love you, legends. So many thanks to uh, Tom Urquhart. Well, the uh, highlights from that contest are pretty brief, to say the least. Over in about 25 seconds, the first two left hands landed. The third one sealed the deal for Jamie King. Mel Medat who held news uh, completely out of his depth there, wide open for the left hand down the middle. He was stunned by the second one and the third one knocked him completely away from his senses. Well, there's only two things we can take away from that. It, one is uh, Jamie King can punch with his left hand and Al Husni should should never ever box again. I mean, they're, they're, they're the two things. I mean, 16 seconds, that's all we can take away from that. But look, it's, it's yeah. a win for Jamie King. He'll be absolutely over the moon. He said it there himself. What an occasion to, to have your debut. Um, and uh, look, he'll, he'll be looking to get straight back in the action uh, <laughs> and carry on where he left off. Well, Darren, uh, it's been great to, to call the undercard uh, with you. We're going to be back in 23 minutes time, half past the hour, wherever you're watching, whatever that translates to, half past the hour, coresports.world, free to view, Hafthor Bjornsson and Simon Valili. Thor's second exhibition bout ahead of that huge clash on September the 18th against the beast, Eddie Hall. Do not miss it, folks. Chris Lloyd and Darren Barker right here will be here in 24 minutes time, 23 minutes time for our main event here in Dubai. Bjornsson versus Valili. We'll see you very soon. Escape to the most tropical island. With the most tropical flavor. Not that kind of flavor. That kind. Then add a floral punch of lychee slammed into a tangy burst of lily corn. Give it zero sugar, but still make it taste good. Paradise good. Then pack it with powder so you can outdo you. That's what goes into New Rain Lily Coin Lychee. A total body fuel. There is a stronghold. It will be heavily guarded. Of course it is. It's the most valuable thing in the world. We will send a dozen Viking ships through the landing. And raid, pillage, until we make it there. No survivors! Yeah! Yeah! We are in the hands of Odin! Yeah! So are you guys doing all of this just for some beard oil? Yeah. 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 Are you looking to let your hair down and have a good time? Well, look no further. Check. Skinny Isaacs Belfast, Northern Ireland's premier hair house, has all the tools to satisfy your needs. Choose from our lineup of high quality barbers. Maybe it's time you paid a visit to the hair house. Keep it.
be sleeping keep on waking without the woman next to me the guilt is burning inside i'm hurting this ain't a feeling i can keep 